Welcome back to Cosmoholics Anonymous. I am your favorite girl, Bo Vintage, and today's video is my Bad Girls Club reunion recap. And we're just gonna jump right into it. When I first started watching it, I wasn't sure if I wanted to bother reviewing it or not, just because Bad Girls Club reunions always start off really slow and they do the backstage shit. And so I was like, I don't know if I should do it because it's gonna be like it's backstage for the first fucking 10 minutes and then it's gonna be just a really slow climax and so I wasn't sure but then I decided you know what fuck it we did the entire season let's just do it all so here I am so backstage Erica Mena from Love and Hip Hop New York the super old seasons is the backstage correspondent just like last season and she's basically just there to get some tea in the back room while the show is going on or while other girls are on stage and before they go on and stuff. So the first room Erica Mena stops by is Kiki, Sayora, Fran, and Brie. And she just is checking in with them to see like what their goals are for the reunion. And both Brie and Kiki are basically saying they're out for blood, like there will be no long talking. I don't know if that's actually what's gonna play out, but we will see. Brie is very specific and says that she wants to see Key and also Susan because apparently Susan was talking mad shit on the internet and they never met and they definitely didn't know each other because she was the replacement for Susan so it could have just been she was jealous or I don't know what but apparently she had tweeted Brie and Brie didn't like that tweet too much and so that's basically where their beef stems from. Their little backstage conversation with Erica was not too long you know it wasn't a big deal so then Erica goes to the other room and oh a bitch got broccoli in her teeth so then Erica goes to the next room and she's talking with Seven and Key and also Susan and she's basically pointing out the fact that DeShayla isn't there so Key basically tells her to come sit down so she can spill whatever tea she has on why is not there. And her reasoning for DeShayla not being there is that DeShayla is a bitch. Now, I have to agree with this because realistically, the reunion is there for you to resolve your issues. And so for the fact that DeShayla didn't show up because she's running scared is whack as hell. Like, she should be there. Whether or not she's cool with those girls that she was cool with for the majority of the season. I don't remember if she told Erica this or if it was in confessional or both, but Seven said that she is definitely going to be getting Kiki's ass. <laughs> and this didn't surprise me at all. It really didn't. On the other hand, what did surprise me was Key, Miss Key Marie. She said that she wants to, you know, speak like women, talk like women, and figure shit out on stage like women. She doesn't want to be the way she was on the show. And I found that very grown up of her. Um, however, I want to see it actually play out. She could say that all day, but I want to see it actually happen. He is basically telling Erica that her biggest accomplishment, I guess, is going to be how she handles herself. It's going to be the new key versus the old key when she's faced with conflict because the old key would turn up and want to fight and do this and that but the new key is a grown woman and she's going to deal with things grown woman Lee, whatever so that's basically what she's saying it's her versus herself she's basically trying to tell us that she changed we will be the deciding factor we by the end of reunion part two we will be able to say whether or not we think she has changed or not or if she's still the bitter angry bitch that we saw on tv that is basically all that happened backstage. I'm sure there was a little bit more, but nothing too important. So let's move on to on stage. Tanisha first calls out the girls that remained in the house. So Sayora, Kiki, and Fran were the first girls to hit the stage because they were the only ones, except for DeShayla and Brie, the replacement, who actually made it to the end. So usually what happens is replacements don't come out until 
they're they're needed, you know. And from an interview that I watched, I believe Brie said that she was only on stage for like the last 20 minutes of the reunion, which was bullshit. So I personally feel like she should have been on for way longer because one, she was a fan favorite, and two, she was there till the end. So Tanisha tells Fran that she is her favorite white girl. I don't know if that surprised me. I don't I don't really feel anything towards her saying that because Fran was a lot of people's favorite white girl, but she was not mine, okay? I liked Fran sometimes and sometimes I didn't like Fran. And at this reunion, I was getting annoyed with Fran, but we'll talk about that after. Fran opens up and says that Honestly, the support from her mother is what kept her in the house. It's what made her be able to do the show until the very last episode because she was able to speak to her mom so frequently. If it was a thing where there was no phone calls and no Skype chow like the old days, well they always had phone calls but everything was really restricted back then. Or if it was a show like Big Brother, she would have to go home because she can't handle she couldn't handle the pressure, so I have to say I am proud of her for sticking it out. And I would probably be the same way. If I wanted to leave, that's the one person I'd want to speak to, my mom. Tanisha asked Kiki if she feels as though she represented the East Coast well. And Kiki says she did because she kept it a buck the entire time. She kept it real the entire time. No matter what the situation was, she kept it real. And so I guess we can agree with that. I don't think... I don't think Kiki was ever fake in the house. She was questionable, but I don't think she was ever fake. That's hard for a Taurus to do, okay? Even though we ain't really claiming her, I'm just saying. <laughs> Once Tanisha gets to talking to Say, she compliments her on her outfit and Say gets up and she's doing a whole bunch of booty shaking. And so Tanisha asks Say Aura if her body is real. And she said, first she said that she got her boobs done. Her boobs are fake, which I actually found surprising because they're very small. But then she said she got fat transfer. So it's like, oh, okay, Miss Say Say. Um, she said after the show, she said her real body was what we saw on the show, but she did get a fat transfer after the fact. She looks fucking amazing. She has a very cute body. I said that during the season. And yeah, so shout out to Sayora. She got a fat transfer, whatever makes you happy, boo, okay? I don't think she, per I personally don't think she needed a fat transfer, but she didn't go overboard with it, and that's what I can respect about the fact that she got surgery. It's not fucking noticeable. Like, <laughs> it was natural. She did it the natural way, and I like that, so. Yes, Miss Sayora. They're sitting on the couch, and I think that DeShayla's name was mentioned. I think um, Tanisha said that DeShayla's missing. And so Kiki said she's going to spill some tea that nobody knows about. And so I was ready, chat. I was sitting on the edge of my seat. But the tea was kind of lukewarm. But, you know, whatever. She was saying that, what's her name? DeShayla, after the show, they had like a group chat or something, and she messaged them and she's like, oh my god, thank you guys so much for checking up on me. Like, fuck those other bitches, basically. Like, they didn't even like me, blah, 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 blah. She's saying all this shit to them. And then two days later, DeShayla tweeted out for hashtag Fab4, blah, blah, blah. And I said, oh no, baby. Once you get back home, you are not supposed to be still flip-flopping like a motherfucking flapjack, bitch. Like, you're supposed to keep it G. And so I was actually really, well, no, I wasn't surprised to find this out. But I was just like, why would you have that conversation with the other girls and then go two days later and tweet hashtag Fab4, which Fab4 is the other side of the house. It's not the girls that she was rocking with at the end. It is the girls that didn't say bye to her, the girls that she was talking shit about after they left, and it just didn't make any sense. Tanisha whips out her iPhone and she calls. You would have thought that this video was sponsored by iPhone. I could have just said phone just now. I'm talking about iPhone. Tanisha whips out her phone. She actually calls DeShayla. And DeShayla does answer. And so when DeShayla answers, she starts questioning her. And DeShayla says that the reason she's not at the reunion is because she's just over it. She's over the drama, blah, blah, blah. And everybody's like, boo, boo, blah, blah, blah. You were on the show. Come to the fucking reunion. Don't not come to the reunion. Whether you have beef with people or not, just come to the reunion. Like... Who cares if you have to throw hands? Throw hands. Like, it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like, don't skip out on the reunion because you're fucking scared. That's weird, man. I, 
I don't understand. Like, I honestly wish the reunion was mandatory. Like, I wish that you... Because I remember one season, Natalie Nunn didn't want to go to the reunion and she was threatened. I think she said that they threatened to sue her if she didn't come. That was the only reason she was there or did her part for the reunion. And so I wish it was like that for everybody because that's not fair. Like, I think it's ungrateful of anybody to decide that they're not going to go to the reunion because they're over it. You weren't over it when you was in the house eating for free, bitch. So why the hell are you over it now? Like, who cares? Just, you know, make it up, come full circle. Don't skip out on the reunion. She's whack. So Tanisha actually asked DeShayla if she's worried about Seven and Key because of everything that happened on the show and she tries to say no she's not. Bitch you was a damn lie. Your ass was shook. Shook it, okay? That is what you are and that is what you always gonna be. A shook ass bitch. So then Kiki actually takes the phone from Tanisha and she wants to talk to DeShayla and so she starts to talk to DeShayla and basically DeShayla is full of shit the end like that is it I don't even remember what Kiki said to her but whatever she said back to Kiki I was like rolling my eyes I'm like you are full of shit DeShayla that's it the end bye see you never literally see you never because you ain't here bitch in this next part Fran tries to teach Tanisha how to be a hype girl and the audience is dead as hell like it was pointless but she was trying to teach her how to be the hype girl and I think Fran was a little bit tipsy or drunk because she damn near broke the table okay she was standing up on the table and the, the staff had to come and like clean up the damn shit that fell off the table because Fran done broke it but Fran did not give one single fuck because she a bad girl had Tanisha got on the damn table now that would have been another story for another day like <laughs> it's a good thing only one of them bitches got on the table so Tanisha asked Sayora about her family because the way that her family was portrayed on the show was that Sayora is kind of like an outcast and you know she is not accepted by them because she has tattoos and she's a little rebellious for their culture and so Sayora basically clears that up and lets us know that her family can't really say shit to her because even though she is that way when she was in school, she only got straight A's and she basically said she's doing better than her cousins. <laughs> she said she's doing better than their daughters, so they need to just mind their business basically. And I was like, alright now, I know that feeling. <laughs> I know that feeling. She also said it was kind of stretched, like they, they stretched the truth on the show. And her family was not depicted the way that she explained it. They edited the show to make it seem worse than it was, which is how it works. So there's no surprise there. So when it came to Kiki, she asked Kiki about how the matchmaking thing is going in her own personal life. And Kiki reveals that she has been getting it in lately. <laughs> so she's basically fucking. I don't know who, but she is fucking. So shout out to Kiki for getting her pussy wet. <laughs> Backstage, Erica Mena is still talking to the other girls. And Key says that at this point, she's still be considered a bully. So she might as well just beat all of these bitches asses. When she said this, I was like, already we're seeing the bitch has not changed. Like... Get your life. Either you've changed or you haven't. Don't come to the reunion talking about you've changed and then be backstage talking about because you're still, you'd are still you still be considered a bully, you should just beat up everybody anyway. How about you just keep quiet and prove to us that you are not the same you were in the house? Because the house is designed to change you. It's designed to teach you and, you know, help learn you something. That's what the purpose of the house is. You're supposed to go in and come out a totally different person. However, sometimes some people have to work harder than others to change. And she's definitely something that needs to work real fucking hard because she is definitely stuck in her ways. It is time for Key and Seven to join the stage and they come out a tad bit pressed. No surprise here. Seven mainly because when she got on the stage as soon as she got on the stage the bitch started to remove her shoes This made Kiki pipe up because they have their beef and She was a little pressed that She was taking her shoes off and she was trying to tell Tanisha the reason seven was taking her shoes off is because she wants to fight her Which was facts when you leave this house 
and then you haven't you don't get to see these people for a while and you're gonna have some anger that's going to resurface so I think when Kiki saw Seven for the first time and saw that she was in getting in fighting mode because truthfully it might not have gone the way it did if Seven didn't come out on stage and start taking her shoes off. Seven came out there with intent, with the intention to fight. I don't think that if Seven came out there and wasn't removing her shoes that Kiki would have even said anything about it. Kiki starts getting at her and she starts telling her that she's a weak ass bitch because... When they came in the house that day, she didn't even let her, you know, take her, put her, put her stuff down. And so she was telling Seven, a real ass bitch would have let me fight fair, you know, would have let me put my stuff down and then square up. But you didn't do that. So she's telling Seven this and Seven is getting pissed and she's just like do something about it do something about it so Kiki stands up and she's ready to fight and Seven stands up as well they approach each other and Seven gets the first hit in she punches Kiki in the face and security jumps on stage the thing with it was when I was watching this happen what I noticed was that Kiki wasn't throwing any hands, which I didn't get. Like, you stood up first, basically. Why aren't you throwing hands? Like, why are you grabbing? Like, she was trying to, like, pull. And I think Seven purposely wore her hair slicked down and in a braid because she knew she was going to fight today. Seven can't prepare, y'all, as she should. In my opinion, Seven won that fight. It was a two-second fight. It wasn't really a fight you could call a clear winner but I'm just gonna say seven one because seven actually hit Kiki whereas I didn't see Kiki physically land any hits on her she was just grabbing at her which didn't make any sense to me however I am proud of her for not falling down on the damn floor okay because that would have just pissed me the hell off so then backstage seven tells Erica Mena that she is not fighting Kiki again she's like this is the umpteenth time I fought this girl I am not fighting her again but seven you went out on stage and took your damn shoes off you were getting ready to fight her you went out there with the intent to fight so how are you gonna come back here now and say you're not gonna fight her again and then she's saying she'll only go back out on stage if Kiki is not out there or some bullshit like that and I'm just like that doesn't make any sense like it makes no sense at all so Erica Mena just tells her to not let Kiki get to her because Kiki knows which buttons to push and so she's just telling her like don't let her get to you. So back on stage Tanisha is talking to Ki and Ki admits that she was mad and miserable the whole time on the show. She said it was probably the worst two months of her life and she said if she could have just redirected all of that bullshit into her music she would have been better off I agree with her statement but her music trash so she could have redirected her energy anywhere else but I definitely agree with that statement she could have been popping bitch but you wanted to be mad so backstage Brie is saying how badly she wants to go on stage. She doesn't like the fact that she's still backstage. Kiki is saying that she'll chill out because she also wants to go back on stage because she had to be escorted off stage because her and Seven were kicking off. So Erica is trying to tell Kiki, like, you gotta chill or, you know, you're not gonna get to resolve anything on the reunion, so... You can pipe up, just be smart about it. You know, don't take it too far, is what she's telling her. Which I agree with, because realistically, we want to see the damn reunion. We don't want them to have to do it. Like, y'all remember that season of Love and Hip Hop? Was that two seasons ago or last season? They couldn't film it with a live audience. They had to film it in somebody's rental home. Like, all because there was too much drama and too much heat that the cast had to be separated. So we go back on stage, like honestly there's so much off stage, on stage, off stage, on stage. 
it's fucking annoying. Back on stage, Seven comes back out and Tanisha asks them about Shay. Basically, everybody on stage is in agreement that Shay is a punk bitch. They all call her a punk and we can't argue with facts. She really is because I just, I'm flabbergasted at the fact that she really didn't show up for the reunion. Like, who do you think you are, bitch? Out of all the people not to show up, I promise you, I thought maybe Susan wouldn't show up because Susan is Susan, okay? I thought that she would be the one to not show up. I really didn't think DeShayla wouldn't show up. You know what I mean? I figured Susan wouldn't show up because she was just irrelevant, like, you know. She was only there for a little bit, so there's nothing to really talk to her about except for her husband. She doesn't have anything going except for that storyline. While Key was trying to speak about DeShayla, Fran kept interrupting and trying to speak when Key was speaking, and it was really irritating me because nobody was talking to her, one. Two, I felt like she was, like, desperate to converse with Key, and, like, she was desperate to... Um, agree with her which I don't know maybe that's just me but that's just how she came off in my personal opinion you don't have to agree but that's just how I saw it like to me Fran was on fuck the Shayla train bandwagon shit like you know what I mean she wasn't even your friend for majority of the show I didn't really get why she was so like involved in key talking about the situation with DeShayla. They decide to roll the DeShayla tape of how the house was after Key and Seven had left and we got to see something that we did not see during the show and I was shocked. I was actually shocked when I watched this. I was like whoa like she never said that or they never aired that when we were watching, what the fuck? They were saving that shit for the reunion, baby. So I'm gonna play it for you guys because Y'all need to see this if you are one of those people that didn't watch the reunion. One of my original bitches. <laughs> I'm gonna miss Key the Least, which is sad to say. If you work on yourself and you admit to what you do, then maybe we can be friends and have a real friendship. But in this house, I definitely can't say that you even cared about me a little bit. So, it is what it is. Do no, it. you won't, bitch. <laughs> I don't know why this shocked me so much. But all I could say was, wow, when I was watching, I was like, wow. <laughs> I was genuinely, genuinely surprised. Tanisha actually referred to DeShayla's flip-flop as one of, or not one of, the biggest flip-flop in Bad Girls Club history. <laughs> and I don't, I don't think we can disagree with that. After I watched that, I was like, okay. Now I see why she's not here at the reunion. Because she knew what she said, but we didn't. She was probably relieved when she watched the show back and they didn't show that particular clip. She didn't know they was gonna air that shit at the reunion. I feel bad for her if they go to her city and catch her ass on the ones, bitch. Oh my gosh. So after they play that tape, Seven and Key actually get really emotional in regards to DeShayla. Key starts saying, this is exactly why I don't open up to people. Like, I shared so much with Shayla. We slept in the bed every night together. Like, she was my bitch. And then she goes and does that. But let's not forget that before she even said those things, you guys left and were talking shit in your confessionals. Because you guys were mad that she went out with those girls and you guys were getting sent home. But that was your own fault. And I don't think that... If they had left a note, DeShayla would have been so harsh on camera. I think she would have been a little bit sweeter about it. Even if she did have more fun with them, with the other girls, she wouldn't have been so vocal about it. And she wouldn't have put so much of that pressure on Key. Because a lot of her, the shit she was saying in her confessional that, that they just aired was revolving around Key's hold on her. So they were calling DeShayla foul. And they were genuinely shedding tears about it. And I really didn't expect that from them. I didn't think, I thought they were on a fuck you thing. So I didn't think that they were going to show, you know, that they were hurt. Because Seven's tears were scro strolling down her face, honey. I was like, oh, okay. They are actually 
they're very sad about the about the whole DeShayla thing, but y'all wasn't sad when y'all cussed her out in your confessionals when you were leaving. You didn't even really acknowledge Sammy didn't even acknowledge DeShayla in her la in her goodbye confessional. Like they both didn't really fuck with her, but I guess they were expecting that they could have talked it out, but mm -mm, DeShayla said not today. <laughs> DeShayla said not today. It was nice to see those girls get emotional about something meaningful you know they were emotional about the fact that they feel hurt by their friend they weren't emotional at the fact that they can't fight right now they had a reason to be crying and to be upset whereas before they would be crying for nonsense and so it was nice to see them be a little bit vulnerable if you know what i mean it was nice to witness that from Key and Seven. And once again, Fran did this thing where she was butting in while Key was talking. It was driving me fucking insane. Like, I don't think you guys understand. Because she's like, I see that now. I see that now that I, oh my gosh, that I watched that. Wow. Like, she was just doing the most. I was like, Fran, shut up. Just do what Sayora's doing and shut your damn mouth. Like, it was just unnecessary. So Tanisha asked Key about feeling like a bully and Key says she doesn't feel like a bully at all. Key was like, she was talking about Sayora and she was like to her, how can you be a bully to somebody that's bucking all the time? And I wasn't sure what the hell she was talking about because from what they showed on the show, Sayora wasn't like that. Unless you came to Sayora with some BS, she wouldn't be popping off for no reason. That's what they showed at least, chat. I don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But from what we saw on the show, Sayora wasn't picking fights. So Sayora tries to say to Key, how many times did I ignore you before I would actually say something? She was trying to speak and then Key just got loud and... She wouldn't let Sayora speak, and then she ends up walking off the stage. And I was just like, really, bitch? Really? And we are supposed to believe that you've changed? It was a little bit of a change, a slight change, because, you know, she didn't pop off and, like, go to fight Sayora. But at the same time, it's like, before you came on stage, you said that you wanted to talk like women, blah, 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 blah. Now you're on stage, Sayora's trying to get her word in. And you're mad walking off the stage talking about look at God, look at God. The reason she's saying look at God is because she's saying like, you know, she's not going to fight right now. But baby, God gave you two ears, okay, two ears and one mouth, which means you should be listening twice as much as you are speaking. And when it came to Sayora, that is not what was happening. So don't be talking about no look at God, baby, okay? Please and thanks. Fran says to Tanisha, I definitely still agree that she's a bully. I said it on the show and I'll say it again. Yes, she did. She, on the show, she was a bully. Point left period. And Seven is side-eyeing the hell out of Fran when she's talking. Bitch is mad as hell. But I was just like, why? Why are you mad that they're saying that she was a bully? She was. Did you not watch the show? Like, I hate people that stick up for their friends even when they're wrong. You're whack. So back on stage, Kiki comes out. And they roll the tape of the rivalry between Seven and herself. And while the tape is playing, Seven is dying laughing at all her fights with Kiki, okay? Now, she was just being petty about it, which is fine, okay? It's, it's fine. Tanisha called it a rumor, and I don't know why, but whatever. And she addressed Seven and asked her if she has a problem with big girls. I was really hoping this would be a little bit more dramatic than it was, honey, but um, it wasn't. Besides, Tanisha has to stay neutral. She can't really be popping off at these bitches, so yeah. There wasn't really a surprise here at the fact that Tanisha stayed neutral and just asked her an interview question. She's a professional, you know? She's not, just because she's big and Seven was talking reckless about big girls the entire season, you know, doesn't mean Tanisha's gonna be out here 
trying to beat her up. It's not her job. It's not in her job description and she getting paid too much to do some fuckery like that. She denies it and obviously Seven's not gonna say yes I do have a problem with big girls. Then Tanisha would have probably popped off. Seven's not gonna say that. Seven's gonna say what she wants to say. No I don't have a problem with big girls. That's a, that's a, that, that's a false thing. Like no bitch it's not false. It's clear that she hated big girls because anytime that her and Thing were fighting that's what she would revert to, to calling her fat and blah 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 and also even before she fought her she was saying that back home it's always bigger girls that she's fighting when Tanisha was asking her the question she did not fucking say anything about fat she kept saying thicker girls thicker girls oh bitch but in confession though you was always talking about fat bitch this and fat ho that so why now are you talking about thicker because thick and fat are two different things okay and one is mean and one is not so she's a damn liar that's just what it is we don't know what her issue is with big girls everybody said a big girl must have stole her man and I can't think of anything other than that because why the hell would she be so pressed about fat girls? Does she want to be fat and she can't gain weight? Like, <laughs> nobody, like, I don't understand. What could it really be that she has such a hate for large women? So Tanisha basically tries to squash the beef between Seven and Kiki and it does not work out because Seven is extremely immature and we saw that here. She said, you guys don't really seem to actually have a problem with each other what's the dealio and seven basically seven for them to squash the beef they just need to not speak to each other anymore that's not squashing a beef this is how we know seven just doesn't like her because she's fat <laughs> because you guys are at the reunion you have an opportunity to squash the beef whether you guys have fought or not you guys don't live in the same city you guys don't have to see each other you guys could they could have sat there and squash the beef right then and there but Seven didn't want to she was being stubborn about it and Kiki was ready and willing to squash the beef but Seven said no so they were unable to successfully squash that beef so it is what it is I was kind of disappointed I guess Seven just feels like because they don't live in the same city and they they don't have to be around each other they don't need to squash the beef but if you are on your grown woman shit why wouldn't you squash the beef even while Tanisha was trying to get them to squash the beef. Kiki was like seven, like we used to, we smiled with each other, we talked about stuff, like, you know, she was basically saying like in the house we did have our moments and we did get along and there's really no need for us to have beef, you know? And so when Seven basically said, nah, like we're not gonna squash the beef or whatever, or they just don't need to talk, Kiki started calling her a fake ass bitch. That was the end of that. So after this, Key comes back out and they show the fight about the food in the drawer. The time say or put the food in the drawer and Kiki, sorry, and Key decided she wants to be mad about it. They addressed that and Key said she doesn't have any problem with I guess anybody or Sayora. Sayora once again tries to start speaking her mind and she is addressing Key and she's like to her, look, I ignored you so many times. I stood up for myself and I'm not standing up for myself. You're calling me a weak bitch. When I do stand up for myself, I'm not allowed to do that. So what you like, what do you want from me in this situation type thing? While she's trying to say this to Key, Key is still carrying on and rolling her eyes and basically trying to shut out what Sayora is saying. Because Key, what I find with her is she does not like to hear the truth if it's not coming out of her mouth, if it's not her truth or alternative facts, bitch. Okay, that is just Key's personality. She is a Leo, so it makes sense. Leos definitely feel that they're always right, they're superior, that's just their nature, that's just how they are. And so she wasn't trying to hear say Aura out for nothing. And so I was just like, there's nothing changed about you, there's no grown woman about you, it's always been her way or no way. And so while this is going on, or after Sayora finishes saying her piece and Key finishes rolling her eyes, she gets up and starts saying something about people calling her a weak bully with no hands and I was like who said that who said that baby I sounded like Portia from Real Housewives bitch <laughs> I was really like who said that I was really confused as to what she was talking about because I'm like I don't remember and everybody on stage even Tanisha was saying who said that and so say or is like nobody 
said that about you like what are you even talking about and so Kiki actually chimes in and says she's talking about like what fans have been saying which I thought was the wackiest shit ever because why are you bringing up what people on the internet are saying like why are you doing that and so this brought me back to when we were in the house listen to me we were in the house and every time she would be mad it was because she would be pressed about what people strangers at restaurants and shit are thinking of the, the girls so that's what it brought me back to when she said that i'm like okay she really cares way too much what strangers think of her because why are you talking about what people are saying on twitter talking about you and you don't have hands like why is that even a thought right now you're at the reunion like come on bitch really so basically once again the issues between her and Sayora did not get resolved there was no beef squashing at this reunion it was just everybody gonna have a burger today like there was absolutely no squashing of any beefs so in this last and final part of the reunion Susan comes out looking a hot ass mess her outfit was not for her body type. I will say that only, okay? When Susan came out, she came out shady as hell. Like, she came out with an attitude and she basically said that she didn't see the other girl sitting on the other side of the couch because Tunisia asked, I believe she asked her, like, how do you feel now that you're facing these girls after so many months? She was like, oh, I didn't even see them. And I was just like, okay, you're being extra as hell for no reason. <laughs> So when she says that she didn't see them, Kiki says, oh, and I didn't see your divorce coming either. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, here we go. We already knew that anything that is said to the Lord Susan would be just the same as it was on the show. But nobody would probably say anything about the, the shit if she didn't come out being petty. It's the same thing with Seven removing her shoes. Everybody wants to come out hard body but then be mad when the tables turn. So Kiki's beef with Susan is that Susan has been talking the most shit out of everybody that was on the show on the internet. Out of everybody that was on the show, Susan has been taking to her Twitter and social media and saying crazy shit. And so that is why Kiki decided to come for her in this moment. Tanisha's trying to talk to Susan and as she's talking to Susan, Susan is removing her shoes, she's putting her hair in ponytails, she is getting ready. To fight and she's denying it while Tanisha is saying to her Susan like what are you doing she's like oh nothing like I'm just you know blah 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 and, and Tanisha's like you look like you're about to like you know get ready to pop off and Susan's saying no 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 okay Susan is saying no and I'm just like what why is she doing this I'm so confused Susan is actually crazy <laughs> so Susan said you guys wanted a show I will give you guys a show and I was just like Susan came here with a vendetta baby like she came here ready to fight for her life fight for her husband's life child fight for everybody she was not going to come to the reunion without fighting at least one person okay she's ready to pop off and, and get his shit popping so before she actually gets to popping off she says to Tanisha this girl right here in reference to Kiki she wants to be just like you. Like, she's basically trying to tell Tanisha that she's obsessed with her and blah, 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 blah. And I'm just like, you didn't come here for this. This is not why you're here. And then she starts to say, she's not even, she's not Brooklyn. She's not even Brooklyn. And so Kiki is getting mad and she's like, run up then. Run up then, okay? Everybody's favorite thing to say this season. Run up, bitch. So when Kiki tells Susan to run up, Susan stands up, Kiki is already standing up, and they are having one hell of a standoff. Neither of them are approaching just yet because Kiki, I guess, didn't have a problem. Well, she probably had a problem with, with Susan, but she wasn't going to say anything to Susan unless Susan came out there with the attitude, which she did. Because Susan has the issue, clearly, she's telling Susan to run up. That's how the, the house worked, okay? So, Susan had an issue. She's telling Susan to run up. They're at a standoff. Security rushes the stage and ensures that there will be absolutely no fighting. Not today, Satan. There will be no fighting today. Uh, so, security's in between both of them. And Kiki tries to swing while this big old security guard's in front of her. I said, why, girl? Why? You are acting like Carly Red in this bitch. Like, no. 
just know. They don't actually get to fight, but this is where they decided to end part one of the reunion. So we won't know what happens until next week. But I'm, I think there will be a couple good fights. I'm hoping. But yeah, that's basically all that happened. So I'm looking forward to next week's episode. And yeah. I love you all and I'll definitely see you in the next one.